Good morning, students. Today, I am going to explain cockroach digestive system. So, we are discussing the type study of cockroach. In that, uh, the body form of cockroach is completed. So, next uh, systems of cockroach. So, first system is the digestive system of cockroach. So, as you know, digestive system. What is digestion? Digestion, conversion of complex substances, complex food materials. The conversion of complex food materials into the simple particles, simple materials for absorption is called digestion. So, digestion is a chemical process. It is a mechanical and a chemical process. Mechanical with the help of teeth, so cut the food materials. Then uh, chemical process, digestive enzymes are releasing from the digestive glands which helps in the digestion of food materials. That is called digestion. So cockroach is an omnivorous insect. It feeds all type of food materials. It feeds all type of food materials and digests the food materials in that uh, elementary canal. So in the digestive system of cockroach mainly two parts are present. Digestive system of cockroach it consists two parts called alimentary canal. Alimentary canal and digestive glands. Digestive glands. Alimentary canal and digestive glands are the two parts present in the digestive system of a cockroach. So first we look at the alimentary canal. So alimentary canal is, it is a very long coiled tube. It is very long and coiled tube. So it is coiled at some places which is present inside the body cavity. Inside the body cavity, so this tube is present. Okay. Na? So alimentary canal is a tube which is starting with the mouth. It is starting with the mouth and ending with the anus, complete gut. Complete gut, it has two openings. One is mouth, ingestion of food takes place through the mouth. Then second one is the anus, ejection of excretory waste materials. Okay, na? nitrogenous waste, ex excretory waste materials are releasing outside through this pore which is called anus. So it is extending between the mouth and anus. Okay, elementary canal is extending between the mouth and anus. It is a long and coiled tube. So, it is mainly three parts. Three parts called foregut. Elementary canal that is three parts called foregut. Second part is the midgut. Foregut, midgut and hindgut. Foregut, midgut and hindgut. Three parts are present in the elementary canal. Elementary canal is differentiated into three parts which are called foregut, midgut and hindgut. So foregut, foregut, other name of foregut is also called as stomodium. It is also called as stomodium. Foregut is also called as stomodium. Midgut is also called as mesenteron. It is also called as mesenteron. Then hindgut. Hindgut is also called as proctodium. Stomodium, mesenteron, proctodium. So first one, foregut. This one is a foregut. Up to here, this part of the elementary canal is called foregut. Then midgut. This part of the elementary canal is called midgut. Then hindgut. This part of the elementary canal is called hindgut. So, elementary canal that is differentiated into the three parts which are called foregut, midgut and hindgut. Here, foregut, it is internally lined by the ectoderm. Internally lined by the ectoderm. So, which is made up with the cuticle, hard material is present. In the lining of the foregut, inner lining of the foregut, elementary canal, it is covered with the cuticle, which is a hard material. Then midgut, midgut. So midgut, it is internally lined by the, it is internally lined by the endoderm. It is internally lined by the endoderm. Next hindgut, hindgut is internally lined by the ectoderm. Ectoderm, endoderm, ectoderm. 
Okay, the four gut is internal lined by the ectoderm. In gut is also internally lined by the ectoderm, which is made up with the hard material, which is called cuticle. Mid gut is internally lined by the endodermal cells, which is soft. Now look at the that each part of the elementary canal. So first part of the elementary canal that is four gut. Four gut is starts with the it is starting with the pharynx. Four gut is starting with the pharynx. Pharynx is opening into the esophagus. Pharynx is opening into esophagus. Esophagus is opening into the next part which is called crop. Okay, now pharynx. Pharynx is present in the head. So pharynx is opening into esophagus. Esophagus is opening into the one a cyclic structure. One cyclic structure, distensible cyclic structure, which is called crop. Okay, now, so inner lining of crop is also covering with the ectoderm, which is called a cuticle. It is made up with a cuticle, useful for the mechanical digestion. Crop. What is the function of crop? Crop it stores food materials. Okay, a crop that store the food materials. Food is stored in the crop, and most of the digestion also takes place in the crop. Most of the digestion takes place in the crop, and it store the food materials. Crop. It is a muscular distensible. Distensible. It can expand. Okay, the lumen of the crop will be expand when the food materials are more enters into the crop. So it is a distensible sac-like structure which is internally lined by the cuticle. It is internally lined by the cuticle. Crop. Crop is opening into next part. It is opening into next part which is called gizzard. Gizzard. Okay, it is also called as proventriculus. Proventriculus, gizzard or proventriculus. This one, this part of the elementary canal is called a gizzard or proventriculus. This one, it is the gizzard. Okay, crop is opening into crop is opening into gizzard. So gizzard, gizzard that acts as the grinding mill. It acts as the grinding mill and also acts as a sieve. It acts as the grinding mill and also acts as sieve. Grinding mill, like uh, it ground the food particles. It ground the food particles into smaller particles. So grinding of food. So for the grinding of food, inner lining of the gizzard that has six powerful teeth. Six powerful teeth are present. How many teeth are present? Six powerful teeth are present in the inner lining of gizzard. So these teeth, these teeth are useful for the cutting of food materials, grinding of food into fine particles. That is the function of teeth. Grinding of food materials into fine particles. So teeth. How many teeth are present in the gizzard? Six teeth are present in the gizzard. So it acts as grinding mill, and also it acts as a sieve. It also acts as the sieve. Save for filtering of food. For filtering of food, here each teeth. For example, this is one teeth. Each teeth that is one hairy pad, one hairy pad which is the backwardly directed bristles. It is one hairy pad. Okay, now back side. So this is the teeth. Back side of the teeth, there is one hairy pad which is backwardly directed bristles. So teeth are useful for the cutting of food. Then these bristles are useful for the filtering of food. Again, okay, fine particles are filtered through this uh, through this uh, bristles. That's why it acts as a sieve also. It acts as grinding mill and also acts as a sieve. Okay, now. so gizzard it is also called as proventriculus. Gizzard that has six powerful teeth, which are useful for the grinding of food material. So it acts as grinding mill, and also it has teeth that has the backwardly directed bristles. These bristles that filter the food particles. So it acts as a sieve. Okay, that is the function of a gizzard. Gizzard or proventriculus. It 
I exercise grinding mill and also I exercise the sieve. So this is first part of the elementary canal which is called foregut or stomodium. Foregut or stomodium. This foregut it is opening into the midgut. Foregut or stomodium it is opening into midgut. The opening of the foregut into midgut it is guarded with a valve. Here one valve is present. One valve is present which is called a stomodial valve. This valve is called a stomodial valve. Where it is present? Uh, it is present between the foregut and the midgut. This is up to here it is called foregut. From here it is midgut. The opening of the foregut into midgut it is guarded with one valve. What is the function of valve? It allows the food materials in one direction. Flow of food materials in one direction. Not uh, backward direction. That is the function of valve. So here that food particles which are grinded by the gizzard that are enters into midgut, not from the midgut into the gizzard. That is the function of stomodial valve. Stomodial valve prevents the backward flow of food materials. Stomodial valve that prevents the backward flow of food materials from midgut into the gizzard. That is the function of uh, that is the function of stomodial valve. Where it is present, stomodial valve. Uh, it is present between the foregut and the midgut. Okay, present between the foregut and midgut, there is a one valve which is called stomodial valve. What is the function of stomodial valve? Prevents the backward flow of food materials from midgut into the that foregut. Once the food materials are enters into midgut, they never passes backside. Okay, they never passes backward due to the presence of this valve, which is called stomodial valve. Okay, now. so this is about foregut. Foregut, it is also called as stomodium. It is internally lined by the ectoderm, which is uh, made up with a cuticle. Then it starts with the pharynx. Pharynx is opening into esophagus. Esophagus is opening into crop. Crop that store the food materials. It is a sac like, bag like structure which store the food material. Then crop is opening into the gizzard. So, gizzard also called as proventriculus it acts as both grinding mill and also acts as sieve which grind the food materials and filter the food materials so with the help of the teeth it grind the food materials and with the help of the that bristles it filter the food materials then gizzard is opening into midgut which is guarded with one valve which is called stomodial valve stomodial valve that prevents the backward movement of the food materials from the midgut into the foregut. For, uh, that is foregut. Next midgut, second part. Here, between the foregut and uh, midgut, between the foregut and midgut, arising on the midgut, here. So these are six finger-like diverticula, six bundles of finger-like diverticula are present. Okay, so bundles of finger-like diverticula are present, 6 to 8, 6 to 8 finger-like diverticula are present, which are called hepatic cica. These are called hepatic cica. Okay, hepatic cica, where these are present? Between the foregut and midgut, arising on the midgut. Arising on the midgut, there are 6 to 8 uh, finger-like diverticula, which are called hepatic cica. What is the function of hepatic cica? Hepatic cica that helps in the digestion of food materials and absorption of food materials. Some amount of food materials are digested and absorbed through the hepatic cica. That is the function of hepatic cica. We are including that hepatic cica in the digestive glands. Hepatic cica, associated glands, associated with the elementary canal. So these uh, cica are present, which are called hepatic cica. So how many cica are present? Uh, six to eight. Six to eight finger-like diverticula are present, which are called hepatic cica. Helps in digestion of food and absorption of food materials. Now look at the midgut or mesenteron. This part, this part of the elementary canal is called midgut or mesenteron. Again, it has two parts. Inner lining of the midgut, it is covered by the endoderm. It has two parts. 
which are called anterior part and posterior part anterior part anterior part is called secretory part anterior part is called secretory part and posterior part is called absorptive part secretory part and absorptive part so first half from here to here it is called midgut okay na so in this midgut it divides into two portions anterior and posterior the anterior part of the midgut is called secretory part why it is called secretory part because in the wall of the secretory part it consists digestive glands glandular cells are present which secrete the digestive juices that consists digestive enzyme secretory secretion of digestive juices is a function of secretory part of midgut okay ra clear midgut the differentiated into two parts anterior part and posterior part anterior part of the midgut is the secretory part which secrete the digestive enzymes digestive juices which consists digestive enzymes okay na and also and also here posterior part is called absorptive part posterior part is absorptive part absorptive part it absorb the food materials which are digested here the digested food materials are absorbing into blood actually this elementary canal is present inside the body okay na inside the body means uh, so it is freely suspended in the body fluid like blood the food materials which are digested here that are absorbing into blood through the absorptive part of the midgut so that means what is the function of midgut it helps in the releasing of digestive enzymes helps in the digestion of food and absorption of food materials digestion of food and absorption of food is the function of midgut how many parts are present in the midgut two parts are present in the midgut called anterior part is called secretory part posterior part is called absorptive part anterior secretory part anterior secretory part that consists glandular cells which secretes digestive enzymes next posterior part is the absorptive part which absorb the food materials into the blood okay and one more here it is inside around the food bolus for example food enters here around the food bolus food bolus means ball of food a ball of food so the ball of food which enters into midgut it is covered with a membrane it is covered with a membrane this membrane is called peritrophic membrane peritrophic membrane this membrane is called peritrophic membrane okay now for example this is a, here it is a midgut midguts when the food materials are enters into midgut around the food bolus one porous membrane is formed which is called a peritrophic membrane so what is the function of this peritrophic membrane this peritrophic membrane that protects the lining of the midgut from the hard food particles if food particles are very hard okay very hard food particles that may damage the wall of midgut that is avoided by so this is the food so these are the walls these food particles are very hard that may damage the walls of the midgut that is prevented by the formation of a layer formation of a membrane around the food which is called peritrophic membrane so what is the function of peritrophic membrane peritrophic membrane that prevents the damaging of wall of midgut where it is formed it is formed in the midgut around the food bolus around the wall of food and it also helping in the digestion of food materials and absorption of food materials prevents the damaging of midgut because the lining of midgut is not covered with cuticle it is not a hard material okay now wall of midgut is not a hard material wall wall of foregut wall of hindgut are hard materials but midgut is not a hard material so it is very soft midgut walls of midgut are very soft the soft walls of the midgut that may damaged by the hard food so that is prevented by the formation of a membrane which is called a peritrophic membrane okay peritrophic membrane this is about the midgut clear midgut midgut is also called as mesenteron 
a differentiated into two parts called anterior secretory part posterior absorptive part anterior secretory part secrete digestive enzymes which helps in the digestion posterior absorptive part which absorb the food materials into the blood and also around the food bolus one membrane is formed which is called peritrophic membrane peritrophic membrane that prevents the damaging of the wall of mid gut so mid gut next part right next hind gut last part of the alimentary canal is called hind gut so hind gut is also called as proctodium it is also called as proctodium this part of the alimentary canal is called hind gut here to here it is called hind gut okay now. here between the fore gut and hind gut between the sorry between the mid gut and hind gut between the mid gut and hind gut there are six bundles of fine yellow color tubules are present okay now, there are six bundles of fine yellow color tubules are present which are called malpighian tubules these tubules are called malpighian tubules okay now, here between the fore gut and mid gut there are six to eight finger like diverticula called hepatic cecum at the same time malpighian and tubule six bundles of fine yellow color tubules are present between the mid gut and hind gut so malpighian tubules malpighian tubules are helping in the excretion they helps in the excretion excretion of uric acid okay now, elimination of the uric acid so uric acid which is present in the body fluids blood that is collected by the malpighian tubules and send it to the hind gut okay now, malpighian tubules that collect the uric acid from the body fluid and send it to the hind gut right next hind gut hind gut hind gut it is differentiated into the three parts which are called ileum ileum colon and rectum ileum colon rectum first part the first part of the hind gut is called ileum so here ileum ileum is the first part of the hind gut which receive the which receive the undigested food materials from the mid gut here digested food materials are absorbing into blood after digestion remaining food particles which are not digested the undigested food which are present in the mid gut are enters into the ileum it also receive the uric acid which is coming through the malpighian tubules so here ileum that receive the ileum receive the undigested food from the mid gut and uric acid from the malpighian tubules then it send it to the colon next part is the wider part which is called colon ileum is opening into colon then colon is opening into the last part of the hind gut which is called rectum rectum is the last part last part of the hind gut last part of alimentary canal rectum inside the rectum there are six longitudinal papillae are present which are called rectal papillae okay now, these papillae are called rectal papillae six longitudinal papillae are present called rectal papillae what is the function of rectal papillae so rectal papillae are useful for the reabsorption reabsorption of water from the undigested food okay in the undigested food material water is available water is present so the water which is present in the undigested food is reabsorbed with the help of this rectal papillae where these are present rectal papillae rectal papillae are present in the rectum which is the last part of the alimentary canal okay na hind gut what is the function of hind gut hind gut it receive the undigested food and send it outside it also helps in the reabsorption of water from the undigested food so between the mid gut and hind gut there are six bundles of fine yellow color tubules are present which are called malpighian tubules malpighian tubules that collect the uric acid from the body fluid and send it to the hind gut so hind gut that has three regions which are called ileum colon rectum 
ilium first part which receive the undigested food from here from mid gut then uric acid from here means from malpighian tubules send it to the next part which is wider part called colon colon is opening into rectum so rectum is the last part of hind gut which has six longitudinal papillae longitudinal papillae which are called rectal papillae so rectal papillae are helping in the reabsorption of water from the undigested food materials elementary canal okay now elementary canal starts with the mouth ending with the anus so elementary canal that differentiated into three parts called foregut midgut hindgut foregut that starts with the pharynx esophagus crop gizzard then midgut again it has two regions anterior part is called secretory part and posterior part is called absorptive part then hindgut hindgut again the differentiated into three parts called ileum colon and rectum okay na so here in the foregut food materials are stored and digested the food materials are stored and digested in the foregut midgut food materials are digested and absorbed okay na digestion of food and absorption of food is a function of hindgut then what is the function of uh, function of midgut what is the function of hindgut hindgut it is helping in the it is helping in the elimination of undigested food and and also reabsorb the water from the undigested food materials elementary canal so associated glands are also present digestive glands are also present one pair of uh, salivary glands here okay na no? one pair of uh, salivary glands so two pairs of uh, salivary glands are present at ventrolateral sides of crop lateral sides of crop uh, so here salivary glands are present salivary glands are present at ventrolateral sides of a crop which helps in the releasing of saliva it helps in the releasing of saliva so saliva is a fluid which helps in the digestion of food okay and digestion of food materials in the mouth it is initiated by the the saliva which is releasing from the salivary glands present at both the sides of uh, elementary canal like both the sides of crop then hepatic cecca hepatic cecca are also including in the digestive glands hepatic cecca hepatic cecca that helps in the digestion of food and absorption of food materials next uh, glandular cells glandular cells are present in the anterior secretory part of midgut anterior secretory part of midgut that consists glandular cells which uh, which helps in the releasing of digestive enzymes so these enzymes that digest the food materials so these are uh, involving including in the the digestive glands elementary canal and digestive glands are the two parts present in the digestive system of cockroach so digestion complex food particles are converting into the simple food particles mechanical digestion and chemical digestion mechanical digestion with the help of the teeth like mandibles are present which cut the food materials then here in the crop also mechanical digestion takes place gizzard also mechanical digestion takes place chemical digestion takes place here in the crop and midgut chemical digestion takes place then after digestion food materials are absorbed then undigested food are releasing into the next part which is called hindgut then from the undigested food that uh, uh, water is reabsorbed remaining food particles they are releasing outside through the anus elementary canal digestive system of cockroach okay and most important for neeta thank you